Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Brief Nerd YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be looking at this, Kessel's A500X, their cannon of a light, the most powerful reef LED they've made to date, and in my opinion, probably the first LED that can actually claim to be a metal halide killer. Alright, so this light is no joke, it is seriously powerful. Now before I get into too much detail, this is not a review. I've not run this light for any length of time. This is simply my thoughts and impressions on this light based on what it is in the market and my initial testing of it over the last couple of days. However, I do believe I'm in a pretty good position to be able to give a valid opinion on this light. Firstly, I'm a long time Kessel user. I've been using the A360Xs for years now and this is essentially the same light in terms of the spectrum and even the lens itself is identical. What has changed is they've doubled the number of, and doubled the density and the number of LEDs in the diode, but the actual spectrum of light that it's putting out is identical to the A360Xs. A quick rundown on the specs, it's 160 watts of Kessel spectrum illumination out of a single, like, one inch, two and a half centimeter lens. Uh, this thing really packs a punch. Um, more or less what you're talking about here is the power of two A360Xs coming from a single point. So you're basically just doubling what you might already know from the Kessel lineup in their ever popular A360X, which I've got three of them running on my current tank alongside two Reef Bright strips. Now we know full well that more power is not necessarily more gooder when it comes to LED lighting. I think the hobby has matured beyond just blatant par wars and testing lights for the pure uh, metric of whichever has the most par is the best. We're way beyond that now. Far more important than par is spectrum, sp spectrum spread and blending. And those are things that Kessel has always done really, really well. But in certain applications, the need for a lot of power is definitely there, whether that be an SBS dominant tank or some other use cases that I'm gonna cover on in this video. And for some of those applications, the Kessel A500X could very well be the right tool for the job. And it's compatible with all of the same accessories as the original A360X, because it's got the two K-Link connectors, one for, um, using a controller like the Kessel um, Spectral Controller X or their Wi-Fi dongle, and also for K-Link cables for daisy chaining multiple lights together. Additionally, there's the magnetic snap-on narrowbeam reflectors, and they've released a new narrowbeam reflector, which unfortunately I don't have that with me right now, but I'll put a picture of it on the screen. That's their 35 degree ultra narrowbeam reflector that uh, has some pretty niche use cases, but opens up some pretty exciting options for people where illuminating a, light, a reef tank properly uh, would just simply not have been possible before. So if you want my full thoughts on Kessel's Spectrum, or they call it Kessel Logic, is the, the controller behind the way that their Spectrum works in their lights, go look at my previous reviews of the A360X where I go into a huge amount of detail on that. And those are long-term reviews of these lights that I've been running for multiple years and it proves that the Kessel Spectrum grows coral. Absolutely, there's no doubt about it. It's a fantastic spectrum, it's a wide spectrum, uh, and corals seem to like it. It's, it's, it's definitely something that gives the same kind of results that uh, old school reefers running T5s and metal halides have been getting for years, but in the LED world. And it's taken a long time for LEDs to really get to that point, but Kessel finally hit the nail on the head um, by replicating that spectrum with the A360X. And that carries forward into the A500X. It is the same spectrum, just a lot more power or a lot more par. So ultimately, why would you want that extra power? Well, there's a few use cases that I can think of. The first is you have an SPS dominant tank, wall-to-wall uh, -wall SPS, and you want you know three or 400 par on your sand bed, and you want six to 800 par near the water surface. Uh, and if, if that's the kind of lighting conditions you're going for, this is absolutely, definitely a light that can provide that. Um, to get that kind of part without using a light like this, you would typically need metal halides or a full bank of T5s or just a ludicrous amount of regular LEDs, like, um, you know, like just 
wall-to-wall Radeons or wall-to-wall Orphix or you know really any light wall-to-wall Kessel A360 X's um, you know any of the LED, good LEDs on the market can deliver that kind of part if you have enough of them a light like this can deliver that kind of part with just one of them um, so that's I guess one of the use cases now there is some considerations with that because of the nature of this light it is a spotlight you can really think of it as a metal halide light all of the light that's coming out of this is being emitted from a single source where this lens is which means there's essentially a V of light coming out of it now without the narrow beam reflector it's an extremely widespread and I'll show you some examples of that against this wall here shortly with the narrow beam reflector it gets punched in and gets narrower but it gets more intense and with the ultra narrow beam reflector it gets even more intense and even more punched in the reasons why you would want that is because you can use this light in mounting applications that were just previously completely impossible. You could mount this light two meters above your tank and use the ultra narrow beam reflector to get the same lighting conditions that you would get by mounting it approximately a foot above your tank with no reflectors. And that's a kind of flexibility that I've never seen before in the reefing hobby. All right, so Kessel's Canon here is incredibly bright, hence the sunglasses. Uh, what I've done is I've turned off all the lights in the apartment, even my fish tank is off right now, and uh, we've blacked out everything as much as we can. And what I wanna demonstrate here is the spread of this light on this big white wall here at different distances, just to give you some idea of what this thing is actually doing. So uh, I'm gonna show you the light initially without the narrow beam reflector and then with the narrow beam reflector at different distances. All right, so this is one foot away from the wall. So you can see the circle of light that it's putting it out. The, the spread on this thing is huge, even at one foot. The length of this tape measure is one meter. So just to give you some sense of scale, I've got this tape measure set at one meter. Now I'm gonna pull back from one foot or 30 centimeters to two feet or 60 centimeters and as you can see now the, the spread of light goes for the entire length of this wall like it's probably about two meters at this point and now if I pull back to three feet or 900 uh, millimeters or 90 centimeters the spread is illuminating the entire wall. It's just ridiculous. Like, I mean, there's not even any point showing the tape measure for scale. It's, it's huge. Um, now, obviously, the power would diminish the further away you are, but that's why a big part of this light is the narrow beam reflector kits that come with it. So, now I'm gonna put the narrow beam reflector on the light. I'm gonna do the same thing and show you the difference it makes. So, one foot away from the wall with a narrow beam reflector. You can see it's almost like a spotlight. It's very clear where the obvious ring of usable light would be in this. And it's probably about three quarters of a meter or 750 millimeters, 75 centimeters. Let's pull back to two feet, just here, you can see the illumination ring, it's a bit over a meter of probably usable light at, at this di distance, and then if I pull back to three feet, almost illuminating the entire wall but you can still see the edge of probably the usable light off to the uh the edges of the of the wall there so that's with a 55 degree narrow beam lens on unfortunately i don't have the 35 degree narrow beam lens which would make this even more narrow and even more intense but i would imagine that it's probably going to double the effect again in round terms so to get this amount of illumination on the wall, I'd probably have to be two meters back. And if I was closer, 
it would look bollock, and it would look something like this, but from two meters away, more or less. Yeah, just kind of goes to show the uh, the impact of this light and what the spread looks like at different distances away from the wall. You should really get uh, your imagination running as to the actual use cases for a light like this, wherein that you could have really, really spread light from a close distance without a narrow beam reflector, or really, really intense light from a further away distance with the narrow beam reflectors. Um, anyway, also just to give you some idea, I have this currently set to 100% intensity and 100% of the white spectrum. And if I change it to the blue spectrum, you can see the difference that makes. And if I uh, lower the intensity all the way down to zero. Now I should also mention that while I have this light on 100% intensity right now, it's almost dead silent. In fact, I have to hold my ear about this close to it to hear the fan spinning at all. And it is spinning. There's a lot of air moving out of this unit. Um, there should be, given how powerful it is in such a small footprint. But yeah, they've done a really good job keeping it silent. All right. Hey Siri, turn on the living room lights. Another application for lights like this would be to have them mounted at a regular height above your tank with no reflectors on them at all and just get that enormously wide spread. You will have some degree of hot spotting um, towards as you get closer to the center of the light, it's gonna be stronger, and as you get further away from the edges, it's gonna be weaker. But given how much power this thing is working with, you're gonna get a huge coverage of light um, from a single source. And if you're the kind of reefer that doesn't have a hood or doesn't like the idea of having banks of LEDs or rows and rows of strip lights, this could be a real solution to that problem. Um, one of these could quite easily light up this entire tank from about one foot away. Now it's not going to give you the ultimate coverage because as you can see all the light is being emitted from a single point so you're going to get very hard shadows and there's going to be sides of the coral that aren't being lit up if this was your only light. So in most cases you'd probably use two, one on either side to help alleviate that. But that's not really, in my opinion, what I think the point of this light is. This is not the general workhorse light that you put you know two or three of them across the length of your tank and then supplement it with um, an led strip or a t5 if you want to really eliminate all shadowing that's not what this is designed for this is designed for maximum power at a distance nobody snuggles with max power you strap yourself in and feel the g's if you've got a really deep tank and you want strong power at the sand bed, you need something like this. It just can't be achieved with any other form of lighting other than going really old school and using metal halide. If you have a really high ceiling and want the lights to not be dangling above the tank but to actually be mounted on the ceiling, this is probably your only option with the ultra narrow beam reflectors. Those kinds of use cases were just simply not available to reefers in the past and so uh, this light's going to open up a whole new world. Uh, I've seen tanks in the past with, which have a drop-off configuration. It gives me ideas of using this tank, this light for the drop-off section and then maybe regular lighting for the other section. You know, there's all kinds of ideas that this light will allow you to fulfill that reefers just previously haven't been able to do. Right on the box, Kessel is billing this as an SPS light for deep tanks. And that is exactly what it is but I think you can use it for so much more. Ultimately, this is definitely not the light for everyone. This will never be the workhorse light that the majority of reefers use. For that, if you're looking in Kessel's range, you can't go past the A360X. It's cheaper, it's not as insanely powerful as this, and therefore doesn't have the flexibility of this, but it's the light that's gonna get the job done, and you know, if you need to expand on its capability, add a couple of strip lights. This is a specialist tool for a specialist application.
I would imagine that if you're the kind of reefer that wants this light, you already know that you want it and you're not looking for reviews or to be sold on it. You just need to know more about it. So to that end, if you've got any further questions on what this light is capable of or how, what ways that you want me to test it, let me know in the comments down below. But the capabilities of this light are exactly the same as what you'd be already familiar with with Kessel A360Xs. 2K link ports, your color dial and your intensity dial. The color dial changes it from blue to white whilst maintaining through Kessel Logic their spectrum, which has been proven to grow coral. And then the intensity dial has 100 points of granularity, zero being off and 100 being full power. If you use the K-Link ports, either for the Wi-Fi dongle or for, or for the Spectral Controller X, you unlock additional capability to control their green uh, near UV and red channels independently of the Kessel logic. Uh, most people will use this just to boost the UV to their liking if they really want to make fluorescent corals pop. Additionally, the controllers allow the light to um, be put on a schedule and enable things like the moonlight mode and things like that, which uh, without the controller, you can't really do, um, save for putting it on a schedule with a mechanical timer. As we've come to expect with Kessel, the build quality on this thing is insanely good. Um, you know, I think I said in my very first Kessel A360X review that they feel like the Apple products of the uh, briefing world. And you know, I think that analogy still holds up, to be honest, the, the build quality on this thing is flawless. It is, you know, it right down to every nut and bolt, the finish, the way that all the pieces fit together, the tolerances and seams, like it's definitely a quality product and feeling it in your hands um, only cements that. Uh, the um, the fan inside it is silent. I had to hold it up to my ear in order to get, um, well, to even know that it was on, aside from the fact that it was blinding me and I had to wear sunglasses. And the mounting options remain the same, in fact, identical as the A360X, with the central screw in the middle, which can be used for their keyring style holder, and then the two outer ones, which can be used with the ringlets that are provided for a, um, a wire hanging kit. So ultimately, I think this light is for one of three people. It's for people who want SPS dominated tanks, already are in love with Kessel Shimmer, but don't want to have to add additional lighting such as reef bright strips or Orphic strips to boost the par to a point that high end SPS really needs. The other reefer that I think this is for is reefers that have really deep tanks. If your tank is pushing 1.5 or even 2 meters deep, your options for lighting currently on the market are extremely limited. But with the A500X, I think this is now going to be the new king for deep water tank lighting. And three, and I think this is the newest category of reefer that previously probably didn't exist, but now probably can exist, is the reefer that wants to illuminate their tank with no visible lighting, aka the lighting being so far above the tank that it's not in your eye line or it's built into the ceiling. This would be the only option on the market that can do that while still providing the kind of par and spectrum and spread that is required for growing SPS or any other corals. So yeah, if you plan to be one of those three categories of reefer, I think you probably already know that this is the light for you. If you're a more regular reefer, probably running a mixed reef on a three or four foot tank that's built by say Waterbox or Red Sea and your lights are currently mounted by a mounting arm or a hanging kit from your ceiling, this is probably not the light for you. If you're looking at Kessel, the A360X is probably the light for you or from any other brand, the lights that compete in that price range. But if you've gone full custom or you've got a, uh, you know, a, a hardcore Starfire tank from Philly Holiday or something like that, and you really wanna get creative and architectural and think outside the box, this could be the tool that allows you to do that. So keep it in mind. I'm not gonna go into pros and cons and I'm not gonna go into a review of the light in terms of how well it performs over my tank because it's obvious this is not the light for my tank. My lights are mounted very close to the water surface and I'm currently getting 600 par at the water surface and about 200 par at the sand bed. I don't need the power of this light. It doesn't make sense for the application that I have right now on this tank. So I'm not gonna go down that path and attempt to review it. This is just my impressions of what this light is and who it's for. 
and you know, giving you some uh, hopefully useful, maybe a little bit silly demonstrations of its true power, um, which I hope, hope you found a little bit educational, maybe a little bit entertaining. And for those of you that fit into those categories that I outlined before, maybe it'll cement your opinion that this is the life for you. Anyway, that's all for today. My name is Marcus, and you've been watching the Reef Node YouTube channel. Bye for now.